G'day guys, it's Paul from Polymad Astro and welcome to another video. When I started this channel, I thought it was going to be a kind of Southern Hemisphere focused science education channel. I'd post about what was in the night sky in that particular month and we would investigate different objects that we could image and the science behind them. And that's where my segment Drizzled came from. We would investigate little objects inside our images that we probably didn't notice were there the first time. But it never took off. I mean, maybe had 20, 30 people watching it. It was my PixInsight for Beginners and my GHS tutorials that really blew the channel up. And I became a PixInsight channel. And I'm okay with that. I enjoy it. Uh, but it's, as I said, not where I thought the channel was going to start. I think the main reason Drizzled never took off was, well, two reasons. One, investigating what was in the images took forever. It was really time consuming. If it wasn't in the NGC, M or IC catalogs, it took an immense amount of effort to find what those objects were. Astrometry.net, how can I assist you today? Yeah, hi. I've got an image of IC2944 that I'd like to plate solve, please. Sure thing. Do you happen to know the RN deck of your image? Nah, mate. But not offhand, sorry. That's okay. How about the image scale? No, but it's around 1.4-ish, I'm pretty sure. That's fine. It'll just take a little longer. Just so you know, we've got a fair few images in the pipeline already, so why don't you grab a coffee? Thanks, mate. That image is plate solved for you. I'll send through the details now. Is there anything else I can help you with today? Yeah, mate. There's this small circular blob kind of bottom middle left. Can you identify that? Oh, sorry. We couldn't find a match for that. Why don't you try Simbad or Ned? Yeah, all right. I'll try that, mate. Thanks, anyway. Have a good day. Secondly, I just don't think I had the storytelling chops to pull it off probably still don't. But life's become a lot easier for those of us that want to investigate those little beauties in our images. SETI Astro has come out with an absolutely stellar, <laughs> stellar script for investigating what those little items are inside our images. And it makes our lives so much easier and it's a super powerful tool. It's called What's in My Image. And in my previous video, I showed you how to put the repository in for SETI Astro. So I won't go through that again today, but it is up here in the scripts menu under SETI Astro. And you can see the script down the bottom here, What's in My Image. Now, if I try and open this now, it's going to spit out an error. And that's because this image has no astrometric solution. So if you've done way to batch pre-processing or something like that, you already have your image solved astrometrically. But if that's not the case, then you need to first go to scripts, image analysis, image solver. And you need to search for the object. So in this case, it's NGC 3572. and make sure that your focal length or your resolution is set and your pixel size is set. And then we run through this and it should solve the image for me. Okay, so that is done. So now we can open up that script, which if you remember is under SETI Astro, what's in my image. If this is a linear image, you will need to click on auto stretch first so that you'll see it. And you'll notice there's two image windows. So this one here is always the full image with a green bounding box representing this box here, which is the preview. Um, and you can zoom in and out of that preview just by using your mouse scroll to look around the image. And if you, if you left click and hold, then you can move that bounding box around. Okay. 
As with most SETI Astro scripts, if you hold shift, left click and drag, like I'm going to do here, then you can produce a region. Okay, now the reason I chose that region is because if I zoom in here, then I can see there's an interesting looking object and I want to investigate what that is. So the first thing that you might do is then click on this query Sinbad button and that's going to search this region here for pretty much absolutely everything it can find. And you can see it's, it's found a heap of things. So anything it identified, it's put a little red circle around it and it also has the list down here of what those are. So I know that, for instance, there is a star here. And if I click on that, see how it went green? That's it over there. If I click on this eclipsing binary, it produces a green box, a green circle over there. So I can search around my image for the different objects. I can also click on the actual object I'm interested in and then search down here for the object that I highlighted. And there it is there. Planetary Nebula, which is what I suspected that object was. So clicking on Query Sinbad is a great way to identify all sorts of things, and then you can investigate those, and the ones you're interested in are the ones that you can focus on. So if I double-click on this, it'll go to the, the, the Sinbad entry for that particular object. So it'll tell me all sorts of information about, about that Planetary Nebula, PHJA1. There's a sample image of it here. Uh, there's all sorts of information on that object. Obviously, more common objects are, are potentially going to have more information about them, but it's pretty cool that you can look them up and, and gather information about them. Now, if you have a specific object in mind, then you can click on the advanced search option here. So rather than searching the whole region for absolutely everything, and you can see this huge list that it's searching through, you can limit the search to specific objects. So let's say that object I suspected had been a planetary nebula. Then I can just limit my search by clicking on planetary nebula and maybe possible planetary nebula here as the option. Confirm selections. Then when I query Simbad for that region, it'll only search for those particular objects and not absolutely everything. So now you can see this list is much shorter. It just has that planetary nebula. I could also use other options such as Visia and Ned to search those. I haven't really gone into depth with those as of yet, um, but I'm sure I will in, in the future to see if they, they give more information, which is kind of cool. The other cool thing that we can do once we've identified what the objects are in our image and, and found objects that maybe interest us, we can go to the annotation tools here, which opens up a section down here. And I can then annotate this image. So let's say I wanted to add some size 18 text with the name of that planetary nebula, PHJA1. Then rather than shift clicking when I'm doing this, if you read carefully, it says alt click and drag. So I can alt click and drag. Whoop, that did not work. Try that again. I'll click and there we go. And it's produced that text uh, for that planetary nebula. I could also draw a little arrow if I wanted to. So click on the arrow button here. And again, Alt, click and drag. There we go. So I've now got a nice image with the, the name and an arrow. And I can toggle on and off the, the, the markers as I, I need to um, so that I can um, just have those annotations, uh, which is pretty cool. Um, and then I could save the annotated image, which would be the whole image, or I could just annot uh, save the, the cropped view here as well. So let's say I wanted the whole image and then this small crop, and then I could put them both uh, in a Photoshop, one on top of the other, chuck it onto Astrobin or something like that, uh, which is pretty cool. It, 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 means now that we really can search our images for, for cool look looking objects, identify what they are, annotate our images and educate others on things that might be in their images that they didn't know. So hopefully that's been of interest to you. Hopefully you'll start using the script to, to have a peek inside your images and see what awesome little beautiful things you, you've got hidden in the background that you didn't know were there.
Anyway, as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.